Welcome back. We're going to switch gears a little bit from Bill C-6 and discuss a petition that was recently tabled in the House of Commons that is calling on a national inquiry about the mass medical transitioning of foster children. And the champion of that petition is Jen Smith, a transgender activist and child protection advocate himself. Jen, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for coming on today to, to discuss this. I think a lot of Canadians are not familiar with your petition, and perhaps they ought to be. Uh, could you please explain why you felt compelled to have this petition? Uh, well, I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of sort of personal significance for me as somebody who does identify as transgender and as somebody who was in the foster care system uh, in British Columbia. Um, some of the uh, statistics and numbers and data that we have now in terms of the rates of transitioning among uh, foster children and other vulnerable kids as well. Um, uh, when I got a look at those, I was very alarmed uh, because they're way above uh, what they should be in terms of their representation of the population. Um, so I would say almost two years ago now, I began uh, uh, basically trying to uh, raise awareness and um, push uh, first the provincial government here in BC and then I decided I wanted to go national uh, and get a national inquiry into what is happening with our most vulnerable kids because this is a very situ uh, serious situation. I don't think uh, most people sort of understand um, sort of the serious nature of um, um, per permitting a medical transition in a youth. Okay, well, we're going to get into exactly what is happening, but uh, what does your research tell you? Like, you're concerned, obviously, that there's a high percentage of a transitioning within the foster community, but share with us some of the data and stats that you were able to uncover. Okay, well, um, it's been sort of well known for a very long time that uh, mental health issues in the transgender youth uh, population are above and beyond what they are in the regular population. So one study, for instance, that uh, analyzed a large number of transgender youths found that 52% of them had one or more DSM-listed psychiatric conditions in addition to gender dysphoria. And that's what's uh, basically, you know, a child who's identifying as the opposite sex. Right. So 52%, that's a very large number. Now, these mental health issues are kind of um, accepted. So the other side of this debate doesn't really question that fact. But up to this point in time, they've sort of said that uh, the reason that they have such high rates of uh, other psychiatric uh, conditions is because they are subject to bullying and, um, you know, these types of things in society. And so this is a reaction to social pressures on them. Right. Um, that sounds reasonable at first, but when you start really getting into some of the, the, the minutia and the details, that starts breaking down. And the first place that this um, uh, sort of uh, rebuttal uh, fell apart for me was when I began looking at statistics in relation to transgender use and autism. Uh, autism rates in the transgender community are very high. Mm. So, um, yeah, it will depend. You know, there are various studies, um, but uh, I think the there was studies... one out of the UK uh, within the last couple of years that suggested something to what you're saying. Yeah, well, the, the studies vary. So I usually let people know that uh, the, the autism rates in the transgender uh, community in use specifically uh, ranges between 8% at the low end up to as high as 54% at the high high end. So we might sort of uh, say that maybe the actual rate is somewhere in the, in the middle. Um, but the thing is, is that, um, so let's say it's um, 30%. Okay, in the middle there. Um, that number doesn't really become alarming or concerning until you realize that uh, the uh, autism rate in the general uh, population of youths, according to the CDC in the United States, is 1.7%. So for uh, autism rates in the general community to be 1.7% and 30%, even if it was just 8%, right, uh, in the transgender community is very alarming. And this is something that, again, is well known, and they have not come up with a uh, valid sort of explanation for why that is happening. To me, this is an indication that it is our most vulnerable children who are falling for transgender identity and getting sucked into this, which has serious consequences that we can get into. But... Um, um, yeah, so 1.7 uh, right. versus uh, 30. Now, the the the, the um, foster children uh, angle of this is is 
um, something that really got me involved emotionally. Now, for those out there who may be religious or believe in God or that type of thing, there's almost kind of a mystical thing. Because when I got into this debate, my primary issue was trying to protect women's rights uh, because uh, we had males, basically, who were taking part in women's sports and being admitted to women-only spaces and stuff like that. And I thought this was crazy. Um, but eventually, I became aware of what was going on with our kids and what was going on with our in our schools and stuff. But um, Jen, I'm I just going to pause. The- Can I p- pause you there? We have to cut yeah. for a commercial break. Well, we're going to come back in the sure. next segment and discuss why you're concerned about these rates within the foster community. Please stick around. We'll be right back. I will. <laughs> 